We all love big time actors like Robert Downey Jr., Brad Pitt, or Jennifer Lawrence. No matter how many movies they make, we can't seem to get enough. We're like that kid from Matilda, and the cake is Tom Hanks' career. Some actors aren't so lucky, though. There are many out there who got their big break only to be completely abandoned by Hollywood. Many of these are Oscar winners or stars of cult classics and big franchises. Every hour a Hollywood actor is forgotten by the industry, so let's band together and give them the attention that they deserve. Pretty much every millennial alive has an undying love for Harry Potter. The film franchise adaptations of the massively successful book series took the world by storm. Everybody assumed that the stars of the series would go on to become some of the biggest names in Hollywood. Well, they were partly right. Emma Watson's made a new name for herself in Beauty and the Beast, the perks of being a wallflower and little women. Daniel Radcliffe has been in Imperium, Kill Your Darlings, and as the most entertaining corpse ever in Swiss Army Man. Rupert Grint has been in... Uh, driving lessons. The Ron Weasley actor fell on hard times after the Harry Potter series. He struggled with how to reinvent himself now that his Weasley days are done. Sure, he's been in TV shows like Snatch or Servant, but I'm pretty sure like six people watched both of those shows. His agent really should have sent howlers to every studio in Hollywood. That definitely would have gotten their attention. The 80s Stephen King adapted classic Stand By Me launched quite a few careers. River Phoenix, Corey Feldman, Kiefer Sutherland, and Jerry O'Connell all went on to star in other movies. Then there's poor Will Wheaton, who barely graced the big screen since. The main reason for this probably has more to do with his television role on Star Trek The Next Generation. He played the loathed kid genius Wesley Crusher. His character was so hated that it took years for Wheaton to get over the crushing depression of it. His career and fame have resurged in the last few years with The Guild, Big Bang Theory, and the web series Tabletop, not to mention a small role in the CW's Crisis on Infinite Earths. While he may be distancing himself from Wesley Crusher at last, he will likely never grace the big screen again. Though at least his career didn't fade so hard that he had to star in a movie like Kangaroo Jack. Jerry O'Connell, what happened, man? Did you really need a paycheck that bad? Many fans dream of the possibility that they might lead their own Star Wars franchise. Who doesn't want to make their mark on the galaxy far, far away? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't usually go nicely for the leading actors involved. There's such a thing as a Skywalker curse that has claimed the budding careers of every male lead in the main sagas. Probably the saddest casualty of that curse was what happened to Jake Lloyd. There's probably never been a movie as hyped up as The Phantom Menace. The long-awaited first chapter in the Star Wars franchise was assumed to be one of the greatest films of all time. And then fans actually saw the movie and freaked out in a way that they were not expecting. The film was almost universally loathed. Unfortunately, a lot of that hate crossed over from just criticism of the film to hatred of the movie's child lead. The young Anakin Skywalker was pitched as this generation's Luke Skywalker, only with a more tragic ending. Instead, we were treated to an annoying kid with horrible dialogue and even more annoying midichlorians. None of that was really the actor's fault, but he certainly suffered the consequences for it. The constant bullying he received due to it ruined his life and eventually led him to prison after a high-speed car chase. This naturally opened him up to quite a few pod racing jokes that we just will not dignify here. Let's hope Daisy Ridley has a better time of it. The internet isn't much nicer to her, unfortunately. The second Anakin Skywalker's life may have gone better after Star Wars, but his career definitely did not. Fans were hopeful that the more adult Anakin would be more compelling than his younger self. Instead, they were treated to an inconsistently written, creepy psychopath or hero depending on the scene. Most especially loathed was Anakin's forced romance with Natalie Portman's Padme. Unfortunately, like Lloyd, the hatred for his character didn't stay with the films. Christensen was hated so much for his portrayal of Anakin that he's barely made a movie since. There have been a few sad attempts to reignite his career in films like Jumper and Takers, but neither did it. What's really sad is how compelling the Clone Wars version of Anakin is. Somehow the cartoon was able to inject the character with all the complexity and pathos that the movies lacked. It's gotta be hard for Christensen to watch that show and realize that he's being upstaged by a computer-generated model. Not many can say that. 
the Skywalker curse extends all the way back to the very first Star Wars movie. Of the three main actors of the series, Hamill certainly got the fuzzy end of the lollipop career-wise. Carrie Fisher appeared in hit movies like When Harry Met Sally and worked as a screenwriter for decades. Harrison Ford managed to land gigs on action movies and dramas for pretty much the rest of his life. It doesn't hurt when you follow up Han Solo with Indiana Jones, just saying. Mark Hamill didn't manage to secure a lot of movie work after Luke Skywalker left big screens in Return of the Jedi. Luckily, he took an unconventional career change into voice acting. He performed as the Joker in Batman the Animated Series and managed to play the role across several different series and video games. For many fans, this take on the comic book villain is the definitive performance. It's quite a surprise to see the good-natured Luke Skywalker turn into the embodiment of evil. That would be almost as crazy as the sensitive Theodore from her going on to portray the violent madman. That would never happen though, right? Let's take a break to remember something else that is so often forgotten, the tragic fate of the like button. While it and its brother subscribe appear in millions of YouTube videos, hardly anybody clicks on them anymore. So do them a favor and give both like and subscribe the clicks that they deserve. Then be sure to turn on the notifications to show them how much you care. The ridiculous sci-fi slacker comedy Bill & Ted's Excellent Adventure launched one of the most successful careers in Hollywood. Keanu Reeves has gone on to become one of the most universally beloved movie stars of all time. He starred in hit movies like Point Break, Speed, The Matrix, and John Wick. Yeah, we'll just forget about The Lake House. God knows everybody else who saw that movie has. In stark contrast, Alex Winter went on to star in the movie Freaked. What, you never heard of the classic movie Freaked? It's a comedy about a pair of friends who find a farm of people with severe deformities. It's so much better than The Matrix. No, no, really, don't, don't watch Freaked. Winter never seemed to shake the cold fame he got from playing one half of the Wild Stallions duo. He is set to appear in the third film of the Bill and Ted trilogy soon. Time will tell if his career will get a relaunch after the movie premieres. Maybe if he was an unaging vampire like Keanu Reeves, he would have had a better career. How can you possibly compete with someone who has had centuries to prepare? Ask any college-aged boy what movie poster is hanging in his dorm room wall and there's a 90% chance that it will be the Boondock Saints. If not, it's probably a poster of Tony Montana from Scarface. Boondock Saints is one of the most unlikely cult classics out there. Its plot is so over the top that it becomes a work of action movie genius. The whole thing is worth watching just for Willem Dafoe's There Was a Firefight scene. It's also notable for launching the career of everyone's favorite zombie hunter, Norman Reedus. Aside from playing Daryl on The Walking Dead, he's also portrayed Sam Porter Bridges on the somehow more depressing post-apocalyptic video game Death Stranding. The actor is so beloved that it's probably just a matter of time before he lands a role in a Marvel movie in the near future. Too bad the same can't be said for his movie brother Sean Patrick Flannery. Aside from Saints, he really hasn't done much for the big screen, and that doesn't seem likely to change. What's really strange about the situation is that when you watch the movie, he's the one that seems like the breakout star between the two. Norman Reedus can barely hold his accent together while Flannery is full of charisma. Who knows, maybe they'll make a third Saints movie that will give his career a boost. Of course, it would have to be much, much better than the second one. Not that it could really be worse. Perhaps no film in the last decade has made quite an impression on the millennial generation as Mean Girls. In 50 years, nursing homes will be filled with retirees who can barely remember what they had for breakfast. Yet on October 3rd every year, each and every one of them will say to each other, it's October 3rd, before going to bingo. That is because Mean Girls is an instant classic. It sent the careers of Rachel McAdams, Amanda Seyfried, Lizzie Kaplan, Tina Fey, and Amy Poehler into overdrive, not to mention serving as a kind of landmark to Lindsay Lohan's once promising career. Unfortunately, not every member of the Plastics became famous after the movie dropped. Lacey Chabert played Gretchen Wieners in Mean Girls and then went on to play in almost nothing else since. You'd think that given how popular the movie remains years after it released, Chabert would have had more opportunities. Perhaps she just failed to wear pink on a Wednesday and this is her eternal punishment. If so, that makes perfect sense. It's hard to explain to younger kids how big a deal the Spy Kids movies were. The Robert Rodriguez directed trilogy spoke to a generation in a way no other movie did at the time. They weren't films that talked down to kids like others did. It was a kids movie equivalent of a James Bond or Jason Bourne film franchise. Two kids who take on their super spy parents' legacies and save the world using gadgets and their wits was as cool as it got. 
Too bad it didn't make a very strong jumping off point for the two main actors. For Daryl Sabara, this isn't really all that surprising. It shouldn't be too controversial to say that he wasn't quite as charismatic as his on-screen sister, played by Alexa Pena Vega. She seemed like a superstar in the making. If that's not enough, she's grown into quite the knockout since the movies premiered, so it's pretty shocking that she's barely appeared in a movie since. Luckily, both actors have managed to score the occasional cameo in a Robert Rodriguez film. Maybe if they ask really nicely, they can battle angels in the inevitable Alita sequel. Sometimes there are performances so powerful that they change the trajectory of an entire career. That seemed to be true for actress Monique after she won an Oscar for the movie Precious. Her performance as Precious's abusive mother is one of the most brutal that you'll ever see. It showed that the famous comedian has the dramatic skill necessary to be a powerful force in Hollywood. Strangely enough, that didn't happen. In fact, she's barely been on the big screen since. While most of these issues you can chalk up to bad luck or bad management, Monique seems to have her own opinions on the subject. She's under the impression that Precious director Lee Daniels sabotaged her career after she failed to thank him for her Oscar. He responded by saying that she just didn't have the right business sense for Hollywood. It's unlikely that we'll ever see the two reconcile on another project. At least we'll always have her performance in Precious to remember how talented she is. Unfortunately, no one in the history of time has ever watched Precious more than once. It's on the uh, Requiem for a Dream list of great movies that are just way too depressing to ever watch again. And there you have it, actors who Hollywood gave up on. Are there any other one-hit wonders that we forgot? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.